Welcome to this session about the communication major at AUP. I'm Mathieu Fouché. I am an admissions counselor here at AUP. Um, and I'm here to introduce this session. You'll have uh, a professor here and two students. I'm going to let them introduce themselves. Um, please enjoy this session. I will come back. I will disappear and I will come back at the end uh, to close this session, give you an email address that you can reach us to. Um, so feel free to ask some questions in the comment section. I will be there to answer them. So now I'm going to leave um, you guys to introduce ourselves and yourself and start the, the session. Okay, great. Thanks. Okay, everybody. Hello. I am Professor Jason Harson. I'm the chair of the global, what was the global communications department is now communication, media and culture. Uh, and the biggest major in the department is global communications. I, my own training and research, especially right now, is on at the intersection of mainstream politics and popular culture. I'm interested in work on things like social change, fake news, disinformation, the attention economy, trust, persuasion, influence, and questions about ethics and all that sort of thing. Now, the Department of Communication, Media, and Culture includes the majors of global communication, journalism, and film, but it also has uh, exciting offerings and minors such as anthropology, sociocultural anthropology, fashion studies, and political communication. We have a new communication and public affairs uh, major as well that's supposed to start um, next year that sort of builds on what has been a political communication minor in the past. So uh, global communications, the global communications major is mainly what I'm gonna talk about here right now, um, briefly. And it's based in the discipline, the academic discipline of communication studies. Now communication is something we, everybody uses and they think they all know, but it's actually a really thorny concept to define. I bet if I asked uh, each one of you out there to define it, we would get different answers or we would get things that sound very obvious and would not be things you would think you would need to study. But one textbook calls it the relational process, relations, a relational process of creating and interpreting messages that elicit a response. Interpreting messages that elicit a response. Um, another textbook has 40, diff found 40 different definitions of communication. But in any case, the general consideration there in that, that statement, the relation of that definition, the relational process of creating and interpreting messages that elicit a response, that general consideration opens on to a wide array of questions and practices and subfields in communication studies. For example, it might be about communication technologies themselves um, and how they constrain and enable different types of expression and, human, and create human relationships. Things from newspapers to radio to television to film and now the computers um, that fold all those previous media into one smartphone or laptop like I'm using here right now. They encompass um, different studies like advertising, public relations, and more particular considerations like YouTube videos, um, questions of conflict resolution between human beings, the attention economy, investigative journalism, Cambridge Analytica, confirmation bias and fake news. All of this is communication studies. So the classes could be about things like communication law and policy. Maybe some of you are hearing discussions about laws right now dealing with fake news and disinformation around these things like uh, presidential elections, like the one in the United States that you just had. Um, or and, and about within that conversations about trying to regulate platforms like Facebook, right? Uh, they are also, the courses are also about things like creating strategic communication messages to influence or persuade others and to know how to carefully respond to the strategic communication of other people or organizations. Um, you begin with basic theories and practices of rhetoric and persuasion and how they open on to business and political work and public relations, advertising, branding, and marketing. So among the many things that our majors uh, learn are how to write articles for news organizations, do brand audits for companies, and social media campaigns for NGOs, 
which they themselves may draw on more particular skills like video production or podcasting that they've learned in classes. And our department is a pioneer in what we call experiential learning, sort of learning by doing is one way of summarizing it. We've got things like the month-long intensive sustainable development practicum in Oroville, India, where students are embedded in um, social businesses and social entrepreneurs and NGOs, learning, contributing to their communication strategies and practices. We've also got some areas of expansion that I want to briefly mention, such as fashion studies. A new fashion studies minor is very popular, this, this area of studies, and we've got two excellent uh, new colleagues. I, I uh, encourage you to look at our website to learn more about that. But Paris has long been a hub of the global fashion industry. You, you know, even if you don't know anything about the fashion industry. Um, fashion Studies uses our unique on-site resources here in Paris to provide on-location, in-depth study of this hybrid field that's undergoing huge transformations, especially around questions of ethics and sustainability. There's also the, the area of expansion and communication and public life from NGOs to government and social movements, tackling some of the, the big contemporary issues around the world, such as climate change, immigration, poverty, racism, sexism, terrorism, regulating social media again, these kinds of questions. And closely related to all these things is an emergent area of interest in data studies, big data studies especially. And these involve some of the keywords of our time like algorithms, artificial intelligence, big data analytics, and the strategic communication that uses it in public and private life. Maybe you've seen the documentary, The uh, Great Hack on Cambridge Analytica. Uh, that would be one of the things that you might um, look at in a class and talk about to study these sort of things. We're launching a five-year BAMA next fall, so you can start your classes and then in the fifth year with a, a master's degree as well, right? And what, so what do, you, what do our students become here in conclusion? Well, they may go into work in corporate social responsibility. They might work in reputation management. They might be a social media communication manager, strategist. They might be a journalist. Some go on to work in intergovernmental organizations like UNESCO and OECD that uh, are on site here in Paris and do internships there. And then others go on to do degrees at excellent schools such as Oxford or Leeds uh, or the London School of Economics. Some of them go into doing research and teaching just like, like people like me do. Now I'm gonna turn it over to, to uh, the students. Thank you, Jason. Um, I'll go first if that's okay with you, Andrew. <laughs> Um, so some of you might have seen me on the AUP admissions page not too long ago. I did an Instagram takeover, but for those of you who don't know me, my name is Kaylin Patterson. I'm a global communications major uh, and this, I'm in senior year. So this is my final year here. Sad to say goodbye. There's still so many courses, as Jason mentioned, that I would still love to take. I know that choosing my classes for next semester was super hard because I just, I had so many different options. I had figured out eight different schedules and I, you know, I couldn't really figure out which ones. I would prefer because all of the classes seemed super interesting to me. And uh, Jason, I love what you said about the communications degree because it truly is such a wide range of courses. I currently am in, in advertising. I'm in civic media. Um, I'm, in, I'm in a fashion course, communicating fashion, and I'm also in rhetoric and persuasion. So it totally, totally random and different courses, but they all tie together in the communications degree. And I just, I love that. I think that's so fascinating. My name is Andrew Callahan. I'm, a, I'm currently a junior here. And when I actually came into AUP, I came in as a journalism student, but I shifted to global comms major as well. Um, I mean, they both said it, everything's very, the global communications department encompasses a bunch of different things. Um, currently I'm taking a research and theory method course, but I'm also partnering that with a podcast, a broadcast course, which I'm trying to tie into one of the internships I've had over the summer. Um, and it's interesting just to relate the two different because one is, as it says, very heavily research focused, while the other one is very much here's you're going to use that research and you're going to produce something from it and you're going to make it um, available for viewership. And I think it's interesting looking across the department, just seeing how those two very different concepts tie together in the end. Yeah. Great. How do you like to... Are students going to, are, are, are the um, prospective students going to ask questions now? Do you know? I think we just get to talk to each other now. We get to talk to each other. I think right. we just have okay. a, we get to have a conversation. 
which is good because I don't get much of that in quarantine. <laughs> so actually, um, Andrew, you said that you're that in a question. podcast course, right? Yeah, I I'm going to open up the chat here. Uh, yes, just please ask questions to each other about the major and your experience, she said. Okay. All right. We can do that. Okay. Great. Um, so Andrew, I just I had a question about the broadcasting the podcasting course because I was actually about to take that. So I'm just wondering, like, what do you do? Do you ever get to actually create your own podcast? Is it technical? Yeah. Is it more? Like, what's it so we're about, I mean, we're halfway through the semester at this point, just past halfway. The first half of it was very much like, here's the, we're using Adobe audio. So it's, here's the program you're going to use and here's what you should know going forward. Um, so we've learned how to edit, we've learned what files to use, and we've learned pretty much the basic fundamentals of it. But along that, we've also learned, like, here are the different types of podcasts you could produce. Like, we've looked at fiction, we've looked at um, realism stuff, we've looked at uh, just even roundtable discussions or just your own narrative. Um, but for the rest of the semester, the in-course part of it is we're going to be looking at the business side. So like talent management, production, all of that, um, like the nitty gritty part of it where you make the money. Um, but then our final for the rest of the for the rest of the term is to produce like three episodes of a podcast. And at the end, we'll be graded on that. We'll present it to the class and it's like, here's the here's episode one. We'll listen and we'll get feedback. But everyone in the class is doing their own sort of deal. Uh, okay. Me personally, I'll be doing a podcast that it's a roundtable discussion with me and my friends who go to university in different parts of the world. And more so, like, how do you how do you stay friends with someone past high school that you now live in completely different cities with? Oh, do you get to, do you get to post it somewhere like on Spotify, or is it just? So, this is for the class. It's very much you can do with the podcast what you want to do with it. Um, the professor actually has her own production company, um, so if we want to produce it and um, actually put it out there, I'm sure she can help us do that. Um, but it's very much what you want to do with it. Me personally, I'd probably just put it on YouTube if anywhere, just because I'm most comfortable with that platform. And it, like I said earlier, it ties together with my internship. So it all goes together pretty nicely, but I mean, you can do whatever you want with it at the end. Right. Of course. Uh, and Jason, as a professor, oh, sorry, you go ahead, Andrew. <laughs> I was going to ask you about your fashion course, because like, like you guys have said, I've actually been interested in taking the fashion courses. I just haven't found one that fits my schedule yet. Yes. So I'm in communicating fashion and uh, I'm actually not, I'm not a huge fashion person. I've never really followed trends or know anything about Prada or Michael Kors. You know, all of my shoes are probably Vans or Converse, like this very basic um, but taking it, like, even though it's not an intro course, I think it still gives you a lot of background. We talk about the history of fashion, how it came to be, and sort of the industry parts of it. But we also talk a lot about the politics that can be involved with fashion, um, which I know sounds kind of strange, but we talk a lot about actual runway shows in which they've connected them with Black Lives Matter. And we talk about you know, like just, it really is, it's political, it's social, there's lots of different movements that you can tie into fashion. And uh, yeah, so I definitely would recommend taking it. Like I said, I'm not like, I wasn't necessarily interested in fashion, but I think it'd be an interesting course for anyone to take. Uh, do you know, I mean, in a, in a COVID free world, which is hopefully soon, but I mean, do you know if like you get to do anything with like Paris Fashion Week or is that is that a different because I know some of the courses at AUP have ties into those. But is that this course or are those different ones? I think it would be a different course. Uh, we did. We were going to go to a museum here, but unfortunately, again, because of COVID, we couldn't. But I think I think it would be one of the other courses like we talk about Paris Fashion Week, but I don't think it's as involved in communicating fashion as it okay. would be in the other courses. Gotcha. Yeah. And Jason, as a professor, I'm, I've always been really curious, but how do you assess your students grading? -wise? Right. Well, I mean, it, it obviously it depends on the kind of course that you have. Um, I try to integrate, I mean, my philosophy about this is that students have lots of different, um, different skills um, that can demonstrate their learning, right? Um, and not everybody has the same ones. And so I tried to shift it around. So for example, you might do a simulation, you might be reading a theory about launching some kind of campaign. Um, it could be a kind of um, 
social justice campaign or something like that. Let's say about like ethical consumption. You're mentioning fashion, you're communicating fashion or something like that, right? Um, so learning about how to create an information or influence campaign, um, a simulation, just a startup, even a press release or something like that. It could be something like that. Um, it could also be giving, I try to give people really basic skills like giving presentations like this now. So you would have to do a slide presentation on something, going deeper into researching a topic that you're interested in knowing more about. Um, that could be just generally speaking, that could be something that you're thinking about more professionally, right? Um, uh, and then you have to get up and convey that in a way that's really clear to people that you, that as a skill, for people that don't know what you know, what you've read or what you've researched, et cetera. So it's a really important skill no matter what you do, I think, after, after a class like this. Um, but you do that by creating a slide presentation. And this semester, it's got a twist on that because you have to create a kind of quick time presentation like this. Um, you have to learn how to float your image on top of a slide presentation. That would be one of the ways to assess. Another would be, I mean, all these studies continue to say despite what some of our parents or others think out there, that employers want more than anything else, more than say particular training in some subject or another, great oral and written communication skills, right? And so still like, it seems strange in this era for some people that the, the essay or you know, getting down, really writing the sort of, here's an introduction to whatever it is I'm talking about. Here's how you make an argument with evidence, et cetera. This is what they want. As much as anything, sure, being able to do a lot of these other, use a lot of these tools, et cetera, is really important, but that too. So still, people being able to write an essay, really working with them on trying to get that, those skills down is important. Then other things, you know, you have to have, like some people are much better at taking, um, say, a multiple choice test or something like that than they are at writing. And so there again, I mean, I'll give them opportunities to be assessed like that. Do you know concepts if I put them, you know, with different options here, you can identify them. Uh, and finally, people, right, I mean, like to, like to uh, use audiovisual means of showing they know things or have learned things and can create things. So I try to allow them to do things like that as well. In addition to having, say, traditional finals where we could do what, exactly what we're doing right now which seems kind of scary, but some of my students like this best, not necessarily with a screen, through a screen, but just sitting down and having an oral examination. Why? Because sometimes the questions on a test or something can throw you the wrong way. And if you really study, some of the students actually, though it seems kind of terrifying at first, really prefer to just sit there and go, yeah, I studied this, let me talk about it. You know, I'll ask you a general question, you know, what was Plato's, you know, critique of, of persuasion in the Gorgias, right? You're studying, you're in, you're in rhetoric and persuasion right now, you know? And uh, here's a hint, it's an ethical and an epistemic or knowing about knowing things, knowing what you're talking about, right? And the student would go into talking about that, whereas if I would have a multiple choice, they could be thrown off, they might misread something or whatever. So I try to use all these different means and in other classes, say if you're taking, you know, like the advertising, um, some classes like that, you might do a brand audit, for example. Uh, there are so many different ways that you get assessed in these different classes, but those are just some of the ones that I use in mine. I think you're frozen. Kaylin. Am I? Uh oh. You're Can back. you hear me still? Yes. I can hear you now. Okay. I'm back. There we go. Okay, perfect. I could I could hear you the whole time, so it's okay. <laughs> okay, cool. Yeah, perfect. No, that's a really good answer. Thank you. And so what about you guys? I mean, so Andrew, what are some of the ways that you've been assessed in your classes? I mean, some of the, I'm sure some of the things I mentioned um, are included. Are there other things that come to mind? I mean, so one of the professors, the professor who I've had, I think the most often in the communications department has been Matthew Frazier. Um, and I know that his assessments is, it's very equally distributed. So we have three essays that we write throughout the whole semester and that makes up, that makes up a portion of our grade. Um, and then we have to do a group presentation which also makes up a percentage of our grade. Um, but then he, I mean, he makes you participate in class and he sends articles that you have to read and he bases his class off of those articles. And the presentations that he creates is very tailored to the article and he uses those a lot. Um, because he introduces a lot of concepts and everything. So it's very, everything's very much based off of 
different parts of different parts of what you said. We have a written text as well at the end, um, but he encompasses everything. So that's mainly how I've been assessed. In other communication courses, though, um, I took one where it was a web design course. So at the end, it was here's here's all the tools that you've learned. Here's how you build a website. And then we were supposed to go pick a um, pick a concept and bring data back, and then build a website representing that data and everything. Um, but those are that's mainly how I've been assessed so far, and it's it's mostly a lot of presentations of concepts that you've researched, and then yeah, the written test in the end. And there's always going to be the level of the essay because it's not a course without at least one essay. And is that the global in the global communications major, or is that the journalism major? That's within the global communications major. Okay. Um, yeah. Yeah. It's all global comms. Mm -hmm. Great. Okay. Yeah. yeah. I think COVID's definitely changed a couple of things in how teachers assess us. Cause I think, you know, lots of times people need to do presentations or speeches and for people in arts courses and such, such forth, like it's hard to do. It's hard to do that when you're online. So one of the ways that my teacher did is he actually just talked to us. He just said, what would you prefer to do? Because we were supposed to do a debate and a debate is a little tricky if you're online, you know, everyone has to have their cameras on and their microphones and we all have to be on the same time zone. And, but I think we've managed to work it out that we're gonna do different groups, but it's just, it's interesting to see. And it's nice to know the professors are really like communicating with, you know, with the students and asking us what we can do and what they can do to make it easier to be online and still still participate in classwork. So it's been good. Do you have any where you're doing a recorded online presentation? Like say a talk like this, and then you use say like iMovie or QuickTime and you edit your, your presentation or is that not something that your professors have done yet? I did, I did not something quite that elaborate, but I did, uh, I started my own Teams chat just with myself and gave a presentation as if I was in a class. And then I just hmm. clipped down the first minutes when I was trying to figure out how to record it and uh, trying to figure out how to end it and then just sent that to her. But of course there was a little bit of, of technical difficulty, you know, every now and then it's a little slower coming up with the presentation and I had to watch it. We, I tried to show a video clip and the video clip wasn't working. So I had to send her all the links. Um, so it's, it's a little complicated, but it, like, you know, we're all working, working around it somehow. Great. Yeah, I'm doing these, these presentations in um, my attention and ubiquitous media class where they are recording something on QuickTime or Screentastic or one of these, these kinds of things and then editing it and then uploading it and we all watch it and then we discuss it and, and uh, give feedback, et cetera. Um, which I imagine, I mean, given this pandemic, I think that my sense is that we're gonna see a lot more communication like this just because People have seen that you can do it from anywhere. Um, it will save office space costs. And I mean, companies are going to see. Uh, so I think getting this thing down as well as possible is going to be, be important. Uh, so we can make the best of these strange conditions maybe and learn that. Yeah, for sure. I agree. Freshman year, you know, if you told me, well, two years from now, you'll be doing this online. Never would have believed you. You know, it's it's such a such a strange concept because it's nothing that everyone had really had really thought about. And now everyone just yep doing my online school. You know, parents are in the other room or you know whatever else there is. It's just something that we've learned to deal with. So definitely, it's it's interesting this sort of communication and how we've really taken advantage of that. It's kind of neat. And and how did you how did you? I'm sorry if I missed this already. I I can't remember you saying. I mean, how did you two come to find the global communications major? Were you already say back in high school, did you know about this? For example, when I was in high school, I didn't know that communications and media were a major. I knew you could go to journalism school or something like that, but, uh, or did you learn about this through your first year at AP? You wanna go first, you want me to go first? It's I'll let you go question. first. All right. Um, no, I came into AUP as a journalism as a journalism and business major, because um, I was going to try to partner the two. Um, but then I shifted to global communications and entrepreneurship. And I went with global communications because um, I realized, because I started looking at internships and I was like, journalism is cool, but honestly, the world of communication, there's much more, there's like much more mobility within it. Um, so that's mainly why I shifted over. And just because I realized journalism still went into communication, I could still do that if I wanted to. 
but mm-hmm. with communication, I had more access to like, I wanted to do talent management. So there was like more stuff related to that field as well as like the whole multimedia design world. And I thought that was cool. Plus I mm-hmm. got access to more advertising, more brand development stuff. And in the end of that, I was like, Hey, this is a much more wide encompassing major than just like a small niche of it, but it all still tied together in the end. So that's why I picked it. That's cool. Um, I was actually undeclared my first year at AUP. So I took my first bridge courses and both of my first bridge courses were, were politics courses. And I very quickly learned how interesting politics was and that it was not for me. (laughs) (laughs) Um, But I I ended up talking with my advisor and, you know, he just said, well, what are you interested in? And I had no idea. I just taken all these random courses and And so he said, well, what are you interested in for next semester? And so I just started looking through the courses and started writing things down. And it was digital toolkit and photography, video production. And, you know, came to the conclusion, he said, well, these are all media courses, like communications courses. And so he mentioned that and he said, you know, sit on it, look into it. And I just started to look into the major more. And I got really excited because I actually found something that was like a blend of different aspects of my life that I could really tie into a major, you know, because lots of times I I think of majors and I think it's, it's a one-way path. You know, I think psychology and I think you have to be a therapist or a psychologist, but there's dimensions to that, but communications, I think can go in so many different directions. That's why I really just fell in love with it. So by my second year, narrowed it down. I said, yep, sign me up. Comms major. Great. Are you in touch? Are you both in touch with people who have already graduated? You know, some of the things they're doing and or uh, are you mainly in your own class and and people who are who are um, underneath? Uh, One of my one of my old roommates, actually, my my roommate from freshman year, uh, she graduated, I think, two years ago, maybe two and a half years ago. And she's doing a little startup business with a friend where she does photography for them. Mm-hmm. So she definitely was more of like the digital media side. Mm-hmm. So, mm-hmm. So. Uh, for me, I think it's a healthy, healthy split. Like half of my friend group is graduating, half my friend group is still in college. Um, mm-hmm. It was interesting because a lot of them were communication and finance majors. And of the ones who have graduated, about half of them have gone to work at firms. And uh, the other half have gone to work, not work, but have gone into a graduate program of some sort. Mm -hmm. Um, But of my friends here, it's interesting just to, I I would be the youngest in the friend group, so I'll probably be the one who graduates last. Uh, But it's interesting to watch everyone else because they're starting to make that decision too of, do I want to do grad school or do I want to do some sort of internship over the summer and go into into a firm? Um, And one of my friends actually did that this past summer and he'll graduate this year and then he'll go on to start a job. And it's just mm-hmm. been interesting to watch all of that as well. Great. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah, no, I have a couple of former students who are, I think, talent, talent scouts and agents, et cetera, out in Hollywood. Um, is, that what, is that what you said, some of the things you're, you're interested in? I mean. Yeah. I so this, this past summer, I was supposed to do an internship with ICC, the International mm-hmm. Chamber of Commerce. And that fell through because of the hiring freeze here. So I'd gone back to the States and I had an internship with a company in LA um, and their whole job was um, my, my role was finding new talent on YouTube and then bringing it to my company. We would, we would manage them. And we'd, hold on. Love the motorcycles. <laughs> um, we would bring that person in and we would, um, we would grow their, we would grow their revenue and we'd grow their follower base. Um, the way it worked was like they had to meet a certain viewership per month and then we mm-hmm. deemed that worthy. So we used like data analytics and all this jazz. And then we brought it in and our job was to, uh, to market different services. Like if they had their channel, we're like, great, we can get you a brand deal. We could get you a podcast. We could do this or that. And then just work with different departments in the end of it. My role was just getting the person to come in And then be like, you're doing great at this. Let us help you do this as well with side projects. That's actually really interesting. I was super fun. It was, it was very stressful. Um, It's public knowledge. I'm allowed to say this. The first day I started um, my manager, he was like, you're going to be, you're going to have a really fun summer. Like we've just signed Naomi Campbell as our, as our biggest client right now. 
and he was day one I met with him and he goes I just got out of a meeting with her team and we're trying to figure out if she wants to use Bentley or Porsche for her official YouTube sponsor I was like my goodness I'm glad I missed that because that is way over my head at this point in time Mm -hmm. but it was super interesting Right. Like did you mm. did you find the rest of the internship stressful? Like, was it a lot of it's a lot of hard work? Um, I mean, I think this might sound a bit sleazy, but I think it was as much work as you wanted it to be. Um, a lot of it was a lot of it was I would show up in the morning, and they're like, "Here's a here's a spreadsheet of there were different categories. So like, there was lifestyle, there was health, there was wellness, whatever." And they were like, "Go look at the these lists and see if they meet us." And then I would have to do, I'd find them. And if they met us, I would reach out to people. Be like, hey, my name's so-and-so from this company and we're interested in signing you. And then from there, I'd give it to my manager. And if they came to us, there would be meetings that I'd go to. So it was a very, it was fluctuating. And I got to work with different departments. Like I worked with our marketing department and our podcast department as well. It was just interesting to see those projects being developed as well. Yeah, no, that's neat. It was super fun, but... It was, it was, I don't think I thought that's what I would be doing with my summer, but when I showed up, I was like, you know what, this is actually quite interesting. And I've been pursuing that since. How did you find the internship? Was it through the school or where'd you get it from? Um, we were sitting, me and my friends were sitting in the K Dorsey building and we're like, we should, we should look at internships. And I found them. And honestly speaking, I thought they were a small startup because I had never heard of them. And then I showed up and realized they weren't. I was like, I don't know, what have I done? Um, but I survived. And it was very, it was very entertaining because when I went through the interviewing process, I was still in Paris. And they're like, are you going to be back in the States? Are you going to be in Paris? I was like, I'll be back. But it was completely remote. It was all done over Zoom as well uh, because they were in LA and California was in strict lockdown as most of the states were at that point. But the nice. ICC one um, I'd found through this school they reached out to me through the talent portal, but then didn't happen. We'll see what happens this year though. Cool. You know, I mentioned earlier um, how the department had been um, one of the pioneers in experiential learning at AUP, and probably everywhere, but um, just wondering if in any of your courses, you, you had had a lot of, a lot of that. Some people tend to go through and have quite a bit, some people not so much, or just wondering if that was part of your experience, both of you. With experiential learning, you said? Yeah, yeah. What do you mean this by experiential? Doing, and sometimes going on study trips. Like I mentioned the, it's not more than a study trip, but that sustainable development practicum in um, Oroville, right. India is one of the signature programs. But there are lots of other little things that sometimes are trips or you're just doing things. Um, you're not simply reading and, and going in and, and, you know, and, and listening to lectures or discussing. Uh, could be right. making things. It could be production classes. It could be all sorts of stuff, right? I think you alluded yeah. to one of those a while ago, uh, Caitlin. Yeah, well, I definitely, like I've taken video production. I've taken uh, digital photography and both of those are very hands-on, even like in the classroom to do their three hour long classes. And in between for your break, the last few, you know, go outside and video something for, for five minutes or go take some pictures of, you know, field of depth of field or something. So there's definitely lots of hand-on experiences. I don't, I wouldn't say there's many lecture courses. Like there's definitely a couple courses in communications where it is just a lecture, but I'd say that, that lots of it is pretty hands-on. Um, mm-hmm. I would have really loved to do the India practicum, but unfortunately it was actually canceled this semester because of yeah, the traffic. Unfortunately. It's unfortunate because that was, that would have been so exciting. I think that's such a cool opportunity. It's a wonderful, yeah, experience, yeah. Yeah, yeah. And I've done some other study trips. Um, nothing, Nothing that in the, in the, like originally was in any of my classes, um, but I did do an anthropology trip to Yakmok, Sweden, and yeah. that was really interesting. And uh, I've looked into now taking environmental anthropology with Tanya Elder because I think that's the course for next semester. I don't think I got into it uh, unfortunately, but there's definitely some aspects of that that were really neat. Like just going going into the real world, there's definitely so many possibilities of that at AUP. Mm-hmm. My freshman year, my first bridge was actually partnered with a communications program and our, we did a study trip to Poland. Um, I will not lie, it was not on like my top 10 places to go in Europe when I first got here as a freshman. Uh, but it was really interesting because it was, it was a memory study. The first bridge was called memory studies and it was concentrated on World War II. 
Um, and it was very interesting just to, we had all the readings of like, here's how, here's how memories get communicated or how we communicate what memories are. And it was a whole bunch of stuff like um, a lot of analogies of what people thought a memory was. Uh, and so one of the, one of the examples was like your brain is a wax tablet and every memory is a stamp engraved in your brain or something. And then we went to Poland. That was interesting just to be like, but this is how a country who was heavily affected by uh, World War II communicates their memories and whatnot of how it played its part in it. And that was interesting to look at. And I definitely wouldn't have done that if I wasn't in that course. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Right. So yes, yeah, so you, you found it interesting, an interesting part of your education to, to take those trips. So yeah. But you know, I've also heard great things about the Indian practicum and I would love to do that. Um, I had a friend do it my freshman year and he had a, he had a really fun time. Um, he, he just came back we played futsal together and he was like, bro, you got to do this when you're available. Um, but he still goes to AUP and we've been talking about it a bit. Yeah, yeah. that would have been such a cool, a cool opportunity for sure. They go you know, for like a month out back and accompany them in some other way and still, still get the experience in in a creative, uh, find a creative solution. Yeah, for sure. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Jason, I've actually got a question for you. Um, yeah. Cause I, like I, you know, there's lots of courses that I see in the syllabus that are returning courses, but do you know any courses that are like becoming gradually more popular? Cause I know like fashion is becoming, is becoming more popular at AUP and that's, uh, you know, we've talked about creating its own major now. And so what courses have you seen really come up and take a rise? Well, I mean, I do think, yeah, I think the fashion, I mean, that we've created new courses in fashion studies because there had originally just been that communicating fashion class. It started out that way. And then we just saw that it was, it was popular. Um, and so we've, we've developed more and hired, um, you know, you've taken the class with Sophie right now. Um, she and Renata Staus are the two, you know, main, they're the pillars of, of that, that program. And it's just, it's growing really quickly, I think. And we imagine that it's going to, we're going to add more classes and maybe even more professors in, in the next couple of years if it keeps going that way. Yeah. So it's mainly that area. I wouldn't say a course, but it's sort of that area. And then I think pretty much anything we're doing with, with, um, with especially in, increasingly with things like big data and things that deal with algorithms and stuff like that. While people are still interested in a lot of the traditional and you know, enduring aspects of communication and communication studies, these areas are really hot. And, um, and also they're, they're important for employers after you get out of here to know things like that. Um, so yeah, I would say those areas, and actually we're seeing a lot of interest these days at AUP, and maybe it's just your generation, a lot of people just much more interesting, interested in kind of political and civic issues and social movements, NGO. I mean, given all the problems that we're facing in the world, right, um, that your generation is really demanding um, um, study and also solutions and, you know, ways to contribute to, to changing this. Um, and so, um, that's also an area of growth, I think. Yeah, would it wasn't necessarily there when I first came to AUP. I don't think. Yeah, right, right. And would you say that like media and communication has affected those social movements? Because I, like we talked about this lots in my civic media class, but I just like I think that social media definitely plays a huge role in social movements around the world because I think they're it's so incredible. well known. You know, you can hear about it in different countries. Yeah, I mean, it's incredible. Sorry. Think about it, how, um, think of what's happened with Black Lives Matters versus um, the work that, I mean, it's not that Black Lives Matters doesn't, you know, people who are, who are participating in that don't work a lot at getting attention and their, their concerns and et cetera out there and, and heard. Um, but just think about that compared to what Martin Luther King and people were working on in the civil rights movement. I mean, you had to get, the attention of the mainstream news media, right? Um, you had to get arrested. You had to have these protests that would, would attract national and international news media. And now, yeah, just look at what's happened with hashtag me too. Look at what's happened with, with Black Lives Matters um, and on and on and on. I mean, of course there are, 
I mean, it, it cuts both ways. The other side of it, right, is that things we're dealing with, with disinformation and fake news and, you know, distrusting pretty much everything out there and not knowing what's real or what's not. Um, the so-called filter bubble effects, people living in their own kind of, you know, communities and, and not getting other information and other sources and so forth. But, uh, but all that is to say just, I mean, it's, it's to point out just how important communication and media is in this moment, right? Seeing things that are, change, that are changing or are at the center of some of our problems too, right? But they all have to be dealt with. Um, so, so yeah, no, I mean, it's, uh, I think it's in one of the most exciting areas of, of study. Um, I really do it at AUP. And when I was um, an undergrad, honestly, you guys are lucky. When I was an undergrad, I didn't really know that much about it. It's just toward the end of my undergrad, I learned about it. And then I went into grad studies in communication and media. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, but if I had to, to go over, to do over again, I probably would have done it as an undergrad. Right. Right. He's back. Hi everyone, I'm back. Thank you, everyone. It was very interesting. Um, and so thank you, everyone who um, were watching. And uh, we hope you enjoy this, uh, this video. We're going to end the live stream in just a moment. But if you have any questions, you can contact your admissions counselor. And if you don't know who your admissions counselor is, you can email us at admissions at aup.edu and we'll put you in touch with your personal admissions counselor. So you can continue um, watching us tomorrow. We'll have a session on environmental science at the uh, same time. And earlier at 5 p.m., we'll have our Dean of Student Affairs um, talking with two students about uh, student support here at AUP. So you can join us tomorrow. So have a good evening uh, and uh, thank you for watching us. Thanks. And thanks to Kaylin and Andrew.